In this year's indoor NCAA championships in Boston, Massachusetts, Terrence Jones lined up for the extremely competitive 60-meter finals. Now, on paper, Jones is one of the greatest 60-meter athletes in collegiate history, as he not only holds the NCAA record at 6.45 seconds, but he was last year's champion as well, where he ran a near-NCAA record in 6.46. Jones's tall and lean stature makes him a rather rare type of athlete to find so much success in the men's 60, but even against many other 60-meter specialists, Terrence Jones still managed to win this year's NCAA Finals with another impressive clocking of 6.54. Even with a rather subpar start here, Jones is the type of hybrid athlete that can do almost anything against his fellow collegiate athletes, as he held his form all the way to the finish and he outraced anyone else by a significant margin. It is already super rare to see an athlete compete so well in the 60 meters with so much consistency. However, just 40 minutes after this NCAA championship, Terrence Jones returned to the track for the men's 200 meter finals. Now this 200 meter field was also extremely deep as the slowest seeded time was 20.60 seconds. But as you can see, we also had many other athletes with personal records well under 20.50. In this field alone, we had five of the top 25 athletes in indoor 200 meter history. So to say that this race was extremely deep would be putting it lightly. However, like an absolute boss, Terrence Jones captured lightning in a bottle once again. With one of the best starts that I have ever seen in the indoor 200 and supreme finishing speed, Jones took his second NCAA title within one hour, and with a finishing time of 20.23 seconds, he only fell 0.02 seconds shy of the world lead of Arion Knighton. And it's also important to mention that he had already tied the world lead just a few weeks ago. We have seen many great sprinters come through the NCAA scene, with many going on to win world titles, Olympic titles, and even break world records. However, none have ever quite been like Terrence Jones, and here is why. In the history of the 60 meter dash, only 21 athletes have ever run 6.45 seconds or faster, and among these sprinters are many names that you probably recognize. There's Christian Coleman, there's Asafa Powell, Trayvon Brumell, and as of 2024, Noah Lyles at 6.43, who was also in the building watching Terrence Jones compete for this NCAA championship. This is a very, very fast group of athletes. However, as we dig slightly deeper into the well of 60 meter greats, we see how complete of a sprinter Terrence Jones truly is. Throughout his sprinting career, Jones has gone on to run 6.45 in the 60, 9.91 in the 100, and 19.87 seconds in the 200 meters. Now to run 6.45, break 10 of the 100, and to run a 19.87, Jones has joined an extremely exclusive club of sprinters throughout track and field history, as only six athletes have ever managed these three clockings, and these are really the top of the top when it comes to sprinting greats. And aside from Terrence Jones, every single one of these athletes here has won at some point or another a world championship or Olympic gold medal, which honestly does make Terrence Jones one of the best overall sprinters to ever compete in the NCAA. And while this doesn't necessarily mean that he'll go on to win a world championship or an Olympic medal, this honestly is very significant, as he is right alongside some of the greatest sprinters in history. To have such speedy times already attached to your name requires absolute greatness from the shorter sprints up to the longer sprint that is the 200 meters. But perhaps the most surprising and intriguing fact of all of this is the fact that Terrence Jones right now is still only 21 years old. Even though Jones is so young, it honestly feels like he's been competing at the highest levels forever. Since 2022, he has been an absolute staple for Texas Tech across every single sprinting event, as he set a total of four national records for the Bahamas and also won multiple NCAA titles. Jones has already thrown down his gauntlet as one of the greatest sprinters in NCAA history, but honestly, he has barely even scratched the surface of his true potential. Back in April of 2023, Jones opened his outdoor campaign with a 100 meter clocking of 9.91 seconds, a time that made him the fastest athlete in the world for 2023 for a number of weeks, and this time also tied his national record with Derek Atkins, an absolute legend for the Bahamas. This was honestly a super quick and super impressive season opener for Terrence Jones, and it made him one of the top 10 fastest 100 athletes in NCAA history. 
but unfortunately, this season opener would actually be his fastest 100 clocking of 2023. From this moment on, Jones was only able to break 10 seconds one more time in 2023, hitting a time of 9.93 during his regional qualifying race. And even though he was one of the favorites to win the NCAA title in this event, he only ran a time of 10.06 seconds, which was sadly more than a tenth slower than a season opener. Compared to many others who only got faster as the season went on, Jones unfortunately seemed to slow down over the final months, which is actually quite weird because when we take a look over at his 200 meter season, the exact opposite took place. For Jones's 200 meter season, he actually kicked off his outdoor campaign with another world leading time of 20.05 seconds, which he ran at the Texas Relays. And then after two months of fairly consistent running, he absolutely threw down at the NCAA Championships on June 9th, where he achieved a time of 19.87 seconds at the NCAA Finals, which surprisingly was only good enough for third place, as he finished behind his teammate Courtney Lindsay and the Nigerian superstar and eventual NCAA winner, Udodi Anwuzarike. Jones always seems to be very competitive when it really matters, which is certainly a solid attribute if you're looking to find success in the sprinting world. But given his unreal starting abilities for his height and his clear ability to hit crazy top speeds, Jones is currently on pace to run some of the fastest times ever. He just has to stay fit and healthy in 2024. The last time someone this tall ran this fast for the 60 meters, it was a rather familiar face. It was Usain Bolt, who by all accounts was an absolute monster at getting out of the blocks despite his taller stature. It is a massive challenge to get to top speed quickly when you stand well over six feet in height. In fact, throughout the history of the 60 meter dash, being over six feet tall can almost be a death sentence when trying to stay competitive in the shorter sprints. Here's a list of the top 60 sprinters of all time. And as you can see, almost all of them are under six feet in height. There's Christian Coleman at 5'9", there's Ronnie Baker at 5'10", and this list goes on and on with many athletes well under six feet tall. This right here is proof that athletes closer to 5'9 or 5'10 usually become the best 60 sprinters in the world. And out of these top 20 athletes in 60 meter history, Terrence Jones is by far the tallest of them all, towering above everyone else at six feet and four inches. Now, if we do the exact same for the 100 meters, we can actually see that on average, being slightly taller helps out tremendously, as the average height here is closer to six feet as opposed to the 60 meter dash. And with this height advantage and the remarkable ability to start, Terrence Jones truly has crazy potential in the 100 and the 200 meters. But, he still has to execute on the day. And with this new NCAA championship and extreme consistency that he has had this season, I want to pass this final question off to all of you. What do you think Terrence Jones is set to do in 2024? Will he have a solid outdoor season in the 100 and the 200 meters? Will he go on to lower his personal records? And what times do you think he will run in both the 100 and the 200? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.